Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be continuing work on the layout. Now, my goal for today is to completely finish off the mountain, so we're going to be adding some foam, some paper mache. I also want to completely frame the whole layout, as well as add a second mountain right here. So I was looking over this map, I kind of realized that just raising this building a bit, I think would really add some dimension, especially with the track kind of being tucked away in the background. I'm also hoping to put down some ground cover towards the end of this episode and really Really just bring this layout to life so we've definitely got some work cut out for us let's begin now since the last video I went and added a whole bunch of expanding foam to the mountains here and this is really just a redundant step if this was going to be stationary you wouldn't need to do this but this layout is going to be transported and I don't want any of this stuff blowing away so just kind of filled in the gaps a bit just to give it a little bit more structure I think it could also be an opportunity to actually carve out some rock faces because this stuff can definitely form edges pretty easily with a blade so we're going to be doing the same thing to that mountain over there to complete completely stabilize it and make sure that uh, it's not going to go anywhere once it's time to move this. For this step you really don't have to be too picky, you just need to kind of monitor how much you add because uh, as the name suggests this stuff does expand quite a bit. Seems like the nozzle has completely jammed, so uh, the location of the uh, new mountain is going to have to be picked sooner rather than later. Well, the expanding foam starts to cure on this side of the layout, I'll begin putting down some paper mache on this side. This method is really simple. All you need is water, some glue, you could use Elmer's glue, or in this case, some stuff I picked up pretty cheap at the dollar store. Uh, you're gonna need a thin paper, you could use newspaper, or you could also just buy yourself a roll. They sell these at Ikea for like 20 bucks and it will pretty much last you a lifetime, so it's not a bad deal. And then you're gonna need some sort of a tray to soak the paper in and uh, also a blade to cut up the paper. Then all you have to do is add some water and a fair amount of glue. I wouldn't be stingy with it. This method of paper macheing is certainly a little bit messy, but I think it does leave you with a pretty decent base coat. Before it dries, it's very malleable, so you can kind of form it over just about any piece of cardboard. And once it does dry, it looks way better because all the puddles of glue and water just disappear, and the leftover glue really adds to the structure, which is important because that paper is quite thin, so having a good thick layer of glue really adds to that. Anyways, I'm going to continue over here. We'll uh, kind of build this area, which I think is going to be a farm, and and uh, fill in some of the other areas which are going to be more forest.
finally got all the paper mache done on this side of the layout and I'm very happy with how it's looking. I think it's going to be a great start to the next step which will be actually painting and adding the ground cover. But the glue is still a little bit wet so I think I'll move on to uh, kind of cutting off the excess foam on this hill as well as the mountain and we'll get that prepped so we can kind of just do the same process again. Well, with that all tidied up, I think I'll just continue to add the paper mache and uh, once we get all this done, we can actually start maybe putting down a bit of the ground cover and frame the layout. It's now about 12 hours later and as you can see the glue has completely dried over the paper mache so this thing is ready to be painted. I just quickly hauled the layout uh, off to the back room here just because uh, after this thing gets painted I want to start adding the frames and I think that that lumber is certainly going to add a lot of weight to this layout so I didn't want to have to lug it through the basement with all that extra weight. But uh, as for the painting itself, it's going to be pretty straightforward. I've just got a dark green paint with a matte finish. And uh, I find that this leads to the most natural look, especially when you apply scenery over it. If it's too shiny, I find it just doesn't look quite right. And then uh, I've also got some acrylic black paint to darken this for certain scenes, like where there'll be forests. As for the turf, I'll be just uh, adding this right onto the wet paint once it's laid out. And uh, this is my favorite blend here, the green blend. It's uh, sort of lighter than some of the other ones that Woodland Scenic sells. And uh, you definitely could get some darker blends for the forest scenes, but I find with uh, a good base, you can pretty much use this for most of your layout. Anyways, let's get started here. Just grab yourself a crappy container. Add your green paint. Yeah, you really just don't have to be too picky for uh, this sort of work here. Just gonna add a splash of water to this next coat.
I thought I had hit record before doing this scene, but apparently I didn't. Uh, in short, put little carvings to show where roads are going to go, so I didn't paint those areas, and I've left this area bare too, because there's going to be a farm field which is going to cover that over anyway. But uh, as for the rest of it, it's all got to be done. Never you miss a spot too, never be afraid to just, just patch them up. I just got all this area done here. You can kind of start to see where the downtown is going to take shape. I don't have a specific plan, but I did roughly kind of carve things out a little bit here. So you can kind of see where some of the buildings might go, but uh, that's still yet to be determined to some extent. And I just got to finish off this area and uh, I think I'll call it a day in terms of uh, painting and ground cover. that should about do it now let's get on uh, getting this thing framed so I've already got a select piece of wood all set out here I tried to find the ones which were not too warped you never really can find a perfect one but I think this is about as close as it's gonna get anyways I measured out the layout it's supposed to be a 4x8 but it's actually just under four feet so I'm gonna cut out uh, two pieces which are gonna go under the layout and then I have to cut out a couple of uh, pieces which are just over eight feet and another couple pieces which are just over four feet. Yeah, the wood is uh, an inch and a half thick. The table's eight feet long, so we need to add three inches to that from the mitered corner to the one on the opposite side.
Well, the fascia is definitely going to need some adjusting to make it more level with the layout, but I don't think this is too bad a start. I'd also like to sand and stain the wood just to give it a little bit more of a professional look, but I think I'm just going to leave it there for today. I'm really looking forward to the next episode because I think that that might be the final one where we actually go add the buildings, scenery, and trees and so on and possibly deliver it. It might be two episodes, I really don't know. But uh, either way, I'm very happy with the uh, progress that's been made today. I think that it's come along way. Anyways, I'll finish things off there. If you have any suggestions uh, for the layout, please let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to hear them. But until then, I just want to thank you all so much for watching.